Okay, CPP assignment. CPP assignment is a taxation transaction. CPP assignments is a taxation transaction. If you've got one individual of the couple that earns more money than the other, then they, they can both assign their CPP and they, it, it should result in the lower income earning spouse getting more CPP and the higher income earning spouse getting less. And for taxation purposes, that means you're going to pay less tax. In other t income concepts, we talk about income splitting. CPP is not split. CPP is assigned. It's basically the same concept, but a bit more complicated. It's the same. It has the same benefit. We're moving income from the higher income earner to the lower income earner in order to pay less tax. That is CPP assignment. But CPP assignment is a little bit more complicated than splitting. With a split, we can just take it down halfway and go from there. In the case of CPP assignment, we pool the portion of CPP while together. we pool the portion of CPP that we accumulated while we're together, be it uh, common law, be it legally married. We pool that portion of our CPP, and then the remainder we keep. We create a pool, and then the pool gets divided in half. The pool is divided evenly between the two spouses. Okay, so let's try a question. So this time we'll do C and D. So we got Charlie and Darlene. Charlie and Darlene. So Charlie, you need to know, Charlie has been contributing to CPP for 30 years. Darlene has been contributing to CPP for 25 years. And they've been married, and again, when I say married, legally married or common law, they've been married for 20 years. So they're both going to contribute the proportion of the years they've been contributing while they were married. So in, in Charlie's case, 20 out of 30 years, and in Darlene's case, 20 out of 25 years. So their proportion is different. Charlie is entitled to a benefit of, say, $900 and Danae is entitled to a benefit of $1,050. So this is all of the information that you're given. Everything to the left of that is the information that you're given and the rest is what we have to figure out. So Charlie gets is going to pool 20 30ths or 2 thirds of his $900. Dar uh, Darlene is going to contribute 20 out of 25 of 1,050. So this is the pool. Charlie is putting $600 into the pool. Darlene, 20 out of 25 years times 1,050, she is contributing $840 to the pool. So the pool is going to be $1,440. How much are they each going to keep? Well, if Charlie's putting $600 into the pool, then he is keeping $300. That's just the difference. If 
Darlene is putting 840 into the pool, she's going to keep $210. Again, that's just the difference. Then they both get half of the pool. They both get half of the pool. So after the split, Charlie is going to get 1,020. Darlene is going to get 930. And that should add up, which thankfully it does, to the total amount. We're not creating income. We're just moving income around for taxation purposes. So that should add up to the same amount that they would have earned before collectively. But what's happening is we have reduced, I'm going to go back just because of the chime there, that should result in the same total amount as before. And it has. What has happened is we've reduced Darlene's income and we've increased Charlie's income for taxation purposes. It's interesting, and this does happen, we've actually increased his income more than hers. So there are times when you might look at it and you might be like, this doesn't totally make sense. But maybe she also has an employer pension, which she can split, or maybe she has some other income which she can't split. So we want to move some income from her hands into his hands.